So let's go through this slide here. So I know that when you first see a IR spectrum, it's very intimidating. It's like, where do you start? Well, that's what I'm here for, to help you develop the correct protocol and steps to take to uh, be successful. Okay. Now there's a lot of peaks, lots and lots of peaks. Tip one, you don't need to identify every single peak. Okay. If you do that, you're going to overwhelm yourself and it's going to be very um, not productive. So where do we begin? Okay. So let's, you just ignore everything from 1400 to 500. Uh, inverse centimeters. Just ignore it. Don't worry about it. Okay. And then you learn to recognize the easy ones. Okay. And the reason why you want to go for those is because they are typically unambiguous. It's like, no, you know for a fact that that peak represents a certain functional group. And so let's just go through some of those to really help us understand what's going on. <clears throat> so what's going to, what you're going to be doing is you're going to look at this molecule here and identify the stretches. Okay. And the key one that jumps out is this guy right here. Okay. That is broad. That is a very broad peak and it's very intense and it's in the range right here, but it goes from like 3,600 all the way down to uh, close to 3,000. That is a alcohol. That's a key indicator. And so that is the OH stretch right here. That's what we're looking at. So we can say, hey, this stretch right here represents that right there. Really? Let's see. That just jumped out at us, right? Okay. Now, do the next thing I do is I look around 1700. I always do that when I see a spectrum. Because what am I look what am I looking there? Why am I looking there? Because that is indicative of a carbonyl. And I don't have a carbonyl. Okay, so the carbonyl is another one that's really easy to spot. The next thing that I do is I always draw a vertical line down 3,000. Okay. Now, this region right here of that line is going to be sp3 carbon hydrogen stretches. And then on the left side of that vertical line, is going to be carbon, or sorry, sp2 carbon hydrogen stretches. And then even further to the left is going to be sp carbon hydrogen stretches. And so when I draw that vertical line, I can see that there's all this signal right here. And so I'm thinking, hey, that has to be sp3 carbon hydrogen stretches. And lo and behold, look what we have here. On all these carbons here, we have carbon hydrogen bonds, which are going to stretch. And that's where you're going to find them. Isn't that cool? So I, when we look at this molecule, there's clearly no sp2 and no sp. Okay. So very confidently, I can say this peak right here is the OH. These right here are the sp3 carbon hydrogen stretches. Now, do I worry about those? Nope, I don't. I found the big pieces, the big ones, and I don't touch that. Okay. Now we have a difference here between a alcohol and a carboxylic acid, right? Alcohols are typically nice and smooth looking, typically. 
They, they can be a little bit messy. They're broad, but not as broad as a carboxylic acid stretch. Carboxylic acid stretches are typically broader. Okay. <clears throat> so when I look at this molecule here, I'm like, or this spectrum here, I zoom in on the the most common stretches. On the, ooh, a, a strong, sharp, intense peak around 1700. That has to be the carbonyl. Done. Ooh, I see a broad, very broad, intense signal in the 3000 range. That has to be that peak. All right. Now, like I've said, I've always, always are going to take that vertical line and I can see that there's signal here as well. So now what we have, some of the signal is due to the OH stretch and some of that signal right here is due to the sp3 carbon hydrogen stretches. What's happening now is there's overlap. So you can't uh, put an arrow there and say that's just the carbon hydrogen stretches. No, it that is signal coming from those hydrogens, but it's also coming from the OH stretch. So there's overlap. So if you annotate this, you're going to say, hey, this whole thing is the OH for the carboxylic acid. And this little portion right here is from also in, from the carbon hydrogen stretches. Okay. So totally ignore the fingerprint region.